testing speech and articulation. Speech is generated in the cortical subcortical area, while articulation is something that all structures are involved, including the vocal cords, the tongue, and the mouth, and the muscles of phonation, or the organs of phonation. So, testing the speech, I should ask the patient first a simple question. If he can hear me and answer me, so the reception and expression are intact. So I will not have to do the next step, which is giving him a complex order. In case the patient did not answer me, I need to know why didn't he answer the first question. Because he didn't understand it, or he didn't hear it, or he heard it and understood it, but he cannot uh, respond verbally properly. So, first I ask the question. If the question is answered, I will not do step two. But if it's not answered, I will give a complex motor order. The third question for examining the speech is naming, giving him something familiar and asking what is the name of this object. By now, we will ask for the speech and articulation. Speech is generated in the cortical subcortical structures. Articulation is governed by motor centers and included uh, in its function, the organs of phonation, the tongue, the palate, the muscles of phonation, or the organs of phonation, the vocal cords. So to test for speech, we'll do uh, four questions. Number one, asking the patient a simple question. If I ask him a simple question and, and he responds properly, so the reception and expression are intact, I will not need the next step, but I will need the other steps. The next step will be give him a, prop, uh, a complex motor order, because if the patient cannot respond properly, verbally, why didn't he respond? Because he heard me, or he didn't understand me, or he heard me and understood me, but he cannot respond verbally. So those who have expressive aphasia, or cannot respond verbally, are ordered something. If he can perform the order, so I'm sure that the reception is intact. After that, I give him an object and ask him to name the object. This is called naming. The fourth thing is repetition. I will give him a word and ask him to repeat the word. Number five, I will ask him in case he is literate, he can read and write, I will give him something to read and then something to write. In, ca in case he can read and write, I have no problem at all in the speech domain. Now I will start asking him. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalamu alaikum. He responded verbally properly. In case he didn't do it, I will ask him for a complex order like, even the complex order, he did it properly. What is the name? Alam. Can you tell me the name of the Iskandaria? Iskandaria. Do you know how to write it? Yes. Do you want to write the name of the name? In the name of Allah. Can you write the name of the name? I know, to me. So actually, all the items for speech are intact. In case the patient cannot talk, this is called motor aphasia or bronchus aphasia or expressive aphasia. If he can talk but he cannot receive the question, so he can speak spontaneously, but he cannot respond, pro respond properly to the question, this is called receptive or sensory or vernix aphasia. If both reception and expression are not functioning, this is called global aphasia. If he can do it, but not properly, it's not completely lost, this is called dysphasia. This is one of the high cortical functions that we meet in patients with learning problems, for example. Uh, if the patient cannot, this is something not related to speech, but it's worth mentioning here. If he cannot do a motor function properly in absence of weakness, this is called apraxia. Like, for example, he knew to write and he, how to use the pen. If a patient who used to write properly and he cannot write now, this is called Apraxia. He cannot perform a motor function that he previously knew and he doesn't have weakness that explains why he doesn't do it. If he cannot read, this is called alexia. And from alexia came the word dyslexia, which are learning difficulties. If he cannot read, write, this is called agraphia. If he can read the word but does not know the meaning of the word, this is called word blindness. If he can hear a word and repeat it, but he does not know the meaning, provided he knew this meaning before, this is called word deafness. These are the things related to speech. Now for articulation. In articulation, you have three methods to test for articulation. First thing, ask him, again, the simple question, or give him a word with several syllables that will show out, which will elicit some difficulty in eliciting them. 
So if we have a problem with articulation, it will appear. So a word with difficult syllables, reading a long text, Sometimes we re ask the patient to uh, read Al-Fatiha, which is something in our prayer that is common. Almost everyone learn it, and it's quiet for one, less than one minute, so the patient can rehearse it properly. The third test is uh, counting from 1 to 100. We don't let the patient count from 1 to 100, but actually some patients, for example with myopenia gravis, show some difficulty or some weakness after counting 10 or 20. So it's another test for articulation. During articulation, I, I, sh uh, I should see the fluency of the speech, the tone of voice, and that I don't have staccato speech, in which the syllables are interrupted in the same word, or slurred speech, where the pronunciation is not that clear. The person is talking like that, so I cannot differentiate the words from each other. If I cannot differentiate the words from each other, this is slurred speech. Or sometimes we meet slow, monotonous speech in patients who have something like Parkinson's disease. So we can comment on the general tone, the fluency, and the nasal, if there is nasal tone of voice or not. By now I'll ask the patient for articulation. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين So I don't have a nasal tone of voice the words are quite fluent uh, he is, uh, has a low pitch somehow or has a slow, uh, low voice actually. This is the only comment, but there is nothing pathological about his articulation. 